the third question we ask ourselves when doing educational analysis deals with the relationship inside a specialization. Now notice that there is a fairly logical relation between the first, the second and the third question. The first question asked you about the relationship between everyday experience on the one side and specialization on the other. Then the second question honed in on specializations and took a look at the boundary strength between different kinds of specializations. Now the third question hones in on a specialization and asks what are the boundary strengths inside a specialization. Now you should be getting the pattern by now uh, but we can see it I think quite clearly on uh, the diagram in front of you. If you take something like science, you have a choice between either integrating the line between physics and chemistry and doing something more general like science, which contains both of them. Or you can distinctly separate off chemistry from physics. You can have uh, different periods, you can have different books, often you can have different teachers, you've got different exams, uh, you separate the two very clearly. You can do the same for history, where you can separate off national history from international history and create a very solid boundary between the two. Or you can integrate the two by continually doing themes, like, for example, something like colonialism. And within colonialism, you do national colonialism on the one side, uh, your own particular history around colonialism, and international colonialism, how it happened across the world. With maths, something similar, you could separate off algebra from geometry, do them completely separate, or in some cases you could combine the two together. And it's quite interesting when and where this happens. So for example, there's a tendency uh, within schools uh, for you to initially integrate uh, the boundary lines inside of uh, subjects or specializations. And there's a good reason for this. What you want to do is you want to initially introduce the person to the general field, to generally what's going on in the area, the basic concepts. So you want to tell them and get them into science or history or maths in its own terms. Uh, and only after they've got a general handle on what's going on do you start to separate off and distinguish the different components of it. Now, it's one thing to ask yourself about the boundary strength with inside uh, specializations. It's another thing to try and understand how specializations work in their own terms inside themselves. And to make this clear, I'd like to pick up on a distinction initially developed by Bernstein uh, between singulars and regions. Uh, I think it's a particularly profound uh, distinction as it catches one of the basic ways that uh, specializations actually work. And let's start off with uh, a singular. And I've tried to capture it uh, through what I take to be this rather attractive uh, diagram, which I suppose I'm pretty proud of doing myself. Um, and what you have here is you have a situation where you have a specialization which is very powerfully turned into itself. It's turned inwards. The specialization has its own rules, its own combinations, its own concepts, which are all logically organized uh, in such a way that they generate a highly specific vision and importantly, a highly specific identity. Um, and when you do the subject, when you do the specialization, what you're doing is you are entering into an internally closed world with its own powerful logics and identities, which insist on uh, making you into a certain type of being. Now, I think you can hear a very powerful Christian resonance here. And it's something which Bernstein hinted at as well. But effectively, what you're trying to point to is you're trying to point to specializations 
which take themselves as their reference point. The reason why they're important is because of what they themselves do inside themselves, and that is justification enough. So, for example, if you're doing maths, the maths is turned inwards to itself. The reason why you do the maths is because of the maths, and the maths generates a certain kind of person inside of you, and it's powerfully separated off from what's going on in the rest of the world. It has its own particular uh, boundary. Uh, if you're doing, for example, history, um, again, uh, the reasons why you're doing history have to do with the history itself, not with some supposed use it might have in the outside world. It will be useful, that is often not in dispute, but the driving force behind it is its own internal uh, questions and logics. Now Bernstein juxtaposes um, a singular to what he calls a region. And I've tried to capture what a region is by firstly pointing out that, that what a region does is it takes the various elements which make it up and it turns them outwards towards the world. It becomes a question about what can we do in the outside world that has some good. Now I've tried to capture it through uh, uh, the hammer and sickle, and I'm not referring to Russia here or to communism here. What I'm, what I'm trying to catch by the symbol is the act of turning towards the world and a world of work, where you are going to try and make sure that you can do something in the complex world out there. Now, regions uh, like, for example, engineering, turned outwards to the world in the attempt to, to build and to construct. Uh, medicine turned outwards to the world to make sure that we can uh, heal the, the sick. Um, nursing turned outwards to the world to ensure that we can care. Accounting turned out towards the world in terms of companies, the practicalities of uh, making sure that uh, money is both made and accounted for. Uh, law turned outwards to the world to deal with the issues of, of injustice in a, in, a, in a legal way. And by me running through these, what we could call professions, I'm pointing to a situation where they turn themselves to the world. And this creates a particular kind of identity. It creates an identity which doesn't turn itself inwards to contemplate its own navel, as it were, navel gazing. The continual question is, what can we do to a specific set of issues uh, that are important to the world as a whole? Now we can combine open and solid boundaries on the one side and singulars and regions on the other side. And you can see this in this simple matrix. Uh, we've already dealt with uh, solid singular. Um, that's a situation where we described a subject like, for example, philosophy, which turns into itself. It has its own uh, identity. It has its own logic. It has its own operating principles. And it finds the logic within its own principles of operation. That's what gives it its drive. And we also described uh, a solid region. That's a situation where uh, a specialization turns outwards in a very focused and powerful way to deal with issues in the outer world. What we did not really describe were open singulars on the one side or open regions on the other. And they're very interesting uh, manifestations of what uh, specializations do when you combine singulars and regions with a more open uh, boundary dynamic. Let's firstly take a look at a singular which has an open boundary. It's still focused inwards. It's still working on its own internal principles as its guiding operation and justifying what it does inside itself. But it is very open to outside influences which continually pour in and either enrich or disrupt this internal dynamic. Uh, you can see this happening, for example, with 
uh, specializations, and I put these inverted commas in some ways, like postmodernism, where you do have specific internal logics which drive it. You do have an internal identity which makes you who you are. But there are massive openings to other subjects, to other forces, to other logics, which continually enrich the process of postmodernism. And, and when you read texts in this area, you'll find that what happens is they pick up on anything and everything from across the world. All subjects are kind of like uh, the zone that it can work with, but it directs it inwards at a particular kind of identity, at a particular way of being. Now, the, the other kind of uh, open boundary is equally interesting. And, and this has to do with the situation where a specialization is turning outwards. But at the same time as that, it is very open to both uh, internal and external forces, which effectively means on one level that it has a difficult job of actually doing the outer work that it needs to do because it is a more uh, dispersed or a less intense process. Now, I don't want to describe this critically, but in some ways I can't help it because I despise what's going on at this level. Uh, but a, a good example of this would be the rise of generic skills, where the argument there is, is, is that you have to look outside to the world, you have to develop skills for the world, but the world itself is continually changing. And in order to adapt to that world, you have to have generic skills which will enable you to adapt. So the internal uh, logic is one of giving you a, a general set of skills which are continually adaptable and open to the world, rather than giving you a specific and highly specialized set of skills which you turn outwards to the world. So rather than becoming an engineer, what happens instead is you get a generic set of skills which enable you to learn whatever it is that you need to do to adapt to the market.